Hi y'all and welcome back to the farmhouse. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you all got the chance to watch the back porch makeover video that I recently posted here on YouTube. If not, I will be sure to link it down in the description below so you can watch that. But this is where we left you. This is how the porch turned out after the big makeover. And now I want to share with you the many projects that I did in order to bring the furniture back. A lot of it was some big makeovers, some small makeovers, and we did pick up a few pieces that were new, but let's jump in and get started. Here is the workbench that was already on the porch, but as you can see, it doesn't really go with the porch theme now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a really light stand. It's been outside on the porch, so it doesn't have a lot of protection on it now. I wanna get it protected and do something that's gonna help make it blend in a little better with the porch decor that we currently have. As you can see, going across the entire front of this workbench are some screws. And that's okay for a workbench that is in a garage, but on the back porch by the back door, I wanted to dress it up a little bit. I found some wood filler that was paintable and stainable. I went ahead and filled in all those holes and then I let it dry really well. I sanded it down and when it was all done, I started painting. If you have been following this channel for a while, you have probably seen the She Shed Build and Organize With Me videos that I have done in the past. This paint may look familiar to you because this is leftover paint from that project. And you know me, I love a good budget-friendly project. I'm using up things that I already have. The more I can do that, the better. So this was leftover paint and I was able to put it to good use as the base coat for the project that I'm gonna do here, uh, the technique that I'm gonna use on this table. It did require two coats of paint, and after the second coat was good and dry, I got ready to start on the technique that I'm going to do. Now, just using some Waverly Dark Antiquing Wax, I used a chip brush. I put a little on the brush and then just went ahead and started aging the table. You can use as much or as little as you like. There is really no right or wrong here. You can take a lot off your brush and just have a little bit of aging. You can put a lot more on your brush. And what I did is I just did it in light layers. I put it on, if I liked it, I left it. And if not, I went a little darker. And you can see here in just a moment that I did end up going quite a bit darker. Once I had the first layer on a few spots, I realized it just wasn't quite dark enough for the space. So I ended up adding some more, making it a lot darker. And that's how you do it. You just do it to your liking. There's no right, there's no wrong. You can always go over. If you don't like it, you can go back to your original paint color 
and paint over it and then try again or you can just add it in layers like I did the only thing that I do uh, to get this look is to go with the grain of the wood or where the grain would be and that kind of gives it that antique look and then I come back also and I pounce here and there just to give it some of those little aged little marks here and there but it's your project and you get to do it the way you like to do it Once I was all finished glazing this piece, I came back in with some Waverly Clear Wax and gave it a good coat of that to seal it and protect it. Even though it's on the porch, it still needs that protection. Then I had this old pair of bifold doors out in our barn. They've been out there for I don't know how long, but I wanted to use them on the porch. So I gave them a really good cleaning. I got them hosed down, scrubbed off, and as you can see, they're pretty well aged, which is okay for the project that I'm doing. Once they were clean and dry, I wanted to fill in the holes where the doorknobs used to be. They're not going to be doors now, so I wanted to get rid of those holes. Using the same wood filler I used before, I went ahead and filled in those holes. Now I want to remove the hardware so I don't have one door, but I have two. also have to remove these parts of the old track that are on the top and they were really in there and I couldn't figure out how to get them out so I got an osculating tool and I decided to cut them off and that seemed to work loosen it up in there and then they were easy just to pop off The next step is to paint the entire door black. I'm using Valspar Cracked Pepper. That's the black that's all through our house. Again, this was some that I had left over. So yay, another win for using leftover paint. Just give this a nice base coat. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be another project that requires several steps or several different techniques. So first of all, we're going to go with this nice layer of dark black paint. On the late afternoon that I was painting these at well into the evening, it was a beautiful day. There was not a cloud in the sky. There was no rain in our forecast. As I finished up painting these, their black base coat, I had gone inside to get a drink. And just in a few minutes, I came out and it was pouring rain. I was so upset, but it was okay. For the next part, we're going to use some school glue and we're just going to brush it on our door. We're not going to be doing any kind of leveling or perfect brushing here, 
the point is to get it thin in some spots and thick in other spots. You don't want it perfect for this. This is the technique that leads to crackling. So while we're putting this glue on, we're just gonna wait a little while until the glue becomes a little bit tacky, almost dry, not completely dry. And when we get to that point, we're gonna come back in and paint with our top color. That is going to be the same color I used on the workbench, the same color that's on our sheds, just using up more of that paint, friends. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect because we want some of the black to come through. We want some of the glue to make a big crackle or a small crackle. While this technique didn't give me the bigger crackle that I was expecting, I think it turned out lovely. I just love the rustic look that this did. So just working in small sections, we're painting on the glue, letting it dry, and then painting on the paint. You don't want to do a big section of this if this is the technique that you're using, just because it does dry fast. And you can see here, I'm already getting the perfect crackle, weathering, it's showing through, very rustic. So I'm very happy with how this has turned out so far. But wait, we're not done yet. One more technique for this project, and that is I'm using coffee grunge paint. If you are a primitive decor person, you probably have heard or used this technique. I have never made this before and I've never used it before. So this was all new to me. And it's just some coffee, some cinnamon, some water, some nutmeg. I'll put the recipe down below and you just put it on and then of course the liquid part of it goes down into some of those cracks that you've just made in the crackle and some of that coffee grounds get stuck on there and dries and it gives it a darker look. So it's just really spotty and rustic and I really really liked it. Let me know if you like how it turned out. Next project were the stands. The stand on the left was a stand that we had. The stand on the right was one I found on Marketplace. I have to tell you, this project was going well into the summer and now we're into late summer, early fall. And I could not find outdoor tables anywhere. And I didn't really want something new looking. I really wanted something rustic and I was lucky to find this small table. The first table we had, I had it sit on the porch and I just really liked it. And the more I looked at it, the more I really liked it and wanted to use it. But I just couldn't find another one like it. So thankfully, I found the one on Marketplace. I only paid $15 for that table. So of course, I was over the moon in finding that table because I was looking at tables that were $150, $200. And you know me, it has to be budget friendly. You really can't see the color here, but it's a really dark hunter green with lots and lots of coating and shellac and whatever you want to call the cover that was on it. It really took a lot of elbow grease and some 40 grit sandpaper to get in there and get all that off. to find in my basement an old can of provincial stain and thankfully it turned out to be almost the exact same color and tone of the stand that we already had so I gave the other stand a light sand and put a coat on top of it as well but then they matched almost perfectly these are the new chairs we picked up. We got them from Home Good. We ended up getting five of them. This bench I found for free during our hometown spring cleanup. It was sitting along the road and I had to have it. I love its rustic charm and it works so perfectly in this space. Once those were in place, I brought in the stands. The one stand we did end up cutting the legs off so they're the same height. Now they're almost the exact the same color. So happy with how those stands turned out. So now we have our chairs 
at our tables in our little sitting area. I brought in the other little stand that was on the porch. All I did for that was give it a light sand and a fresh paint job. These cushions I picked up from Amazon. They are just perfect, nice and fluffy. They are memory foam for all the hours that we sit out here and visit. This, this porch is really like a three season room for us. We just love to be outside and thankfully we have this porch. I had to order the cushions in packs of two and I actually had one left over. So the chair in the corner got an extra cushion. This table was on the porch already in this spot. I didn't do anything to it. I don't have the footage for the shelves, but all I did was sand them down. This one was already here in this spot. I picked this up earlier in the summer at a garage sale for only $2. And all I did was just give it a coat of paint that matched the trim on the porch. And the same with the other shelf we had that one on the other wall and it was kind of the brick orange color i just gave it some brown paint and we hung it just above the workbench and that is the end of the projects and this is how the porch turned out and we are ready for decorating i hope you'll come back for that video and you just saw bear on the porch there he is this video will go up on bear's fourth birthday so please in the comments take a moment to stop by and tell bear happy birthday also let me know which one of these projects was your favorite i love them all but i am going to say that these shutters that I put beside the door are probably my favorite. I really love them. Thanks so much for coming by, friends. Love you all. See you next time.